Item number, SCP-17. Object class, Keter. Special containment procedures. SCP-17 is contained in an acrylic glass cage, 100 centimeters by 50 centimeters by 50 centimeters, centrally suspended in a concrete room measuring 6 meters by 6 meters by 4 meters. Attached to the walls, ceiling, and floor of the room are high-intensity arc lamp spotlights pointed directly at the acrylic cage to ensure that SCP-17 is constantly exposed to light from every angle. Personnel assigned to the SCP-17 control room are to monitor the functionality of the spotlights and the emergency generator system and call for maintenance immediately upon knowledge of a burnt-out lamp or an issue with the generator. The only circumstance under which personnel are allowed entrance is to replace lamps. Personnel entering the room are required to wear the designated full-body reflective suits and must be cautioned not to step in front of functional spotlights. Description: SCP-17 is a humanoid figure, approximately 80 centimeters in height, anatomically similar to a small child, but with no discernible identifying features. SCP-17 seems to be composed of a shadowy, smoke-like shroud. No attempt to find any object beneath the shroud has been successful, but the possibility has not been ruled out. SCP-17's reaction to shadows cast upon it is immediate and swift. SCP-17 leaps at the object casting the shadow and completely encloses it in its shroud, whereupon it returns to its normal size, leaving no trace of the object behind. Item Number SCP-122 Object Class Keter Special Containment Procedures SCP-122 is to be stored in a standard containment chamber containing a single electrical outlet. No personnel dormitories are to be constructed within 500 meters of the containment area. At no time should SCP-122 enter an unpowered state. Several redundant power systems are to be maintained and inspected regularly. In the event of SCP-122-1 manifestation, 35 members of site personnel assigned to enact containment are to be deployed outside the containment chamber. If it becomes hostile, Procedure 99 Renmar is to be enacted. Due to the potentially disastrous side effects in the event of cross-contamination, at no point are SCP-122 and instances of SCP-3060 to be stored at the same facility. To enact Procedure 99 Renmar, all subjects are to assume specific positions in and around the containment chamber in order to prevent a containment breach. Two subjects are to man a portable generator, with which the equipment used in Procedure 99 Renmar is powered. Three subjects are to be equipped with chemical irritants, created as a byproduct of SCP-1837, which has been found to have an inhibitory effect on SCP-1221 instances. After all instances of SCP-1221 have been reduced to the point where entry is safe, five subjects are to enter the containment chamber and use an electrical extension cord from the generator to return SCP-122 to a powered state. These personnel are to be considered irrecoverable after entering SCP-122's containment chamber due to its effect. The remaining personnel are redundant. They will take the place of any incapacitated personnel. Description. SCP-122 is a children's nightlight in the design of a stylized shooting star. When it is in a powered state, SCP-122 lets off between 14 to 20 lux. No manufacturer's mark is present on or within SCP-122's components. When in an unpowered state, SCP-122 will affect all subjects within a 500 meter radius of its location. When the subjects enter REM sleep, they will move into a comatose state in which they will remain until SCP-122 is resupplied with power. While comatose, humanoid figures appearing to be composed of a black, slightly translucent mass will appear from any shadows around the subject. These figures are hereafter known as instances of SCP-122-1. Instances of SCP-122-1 exhibit signs of sapience and sentience with physical abilities roughly equivalent to the affected subjects. They will attempt to locate as many human subjects as possible and expose them to SCP-122's effect. As more subjects are affected by SCP-122, its radius of effect will expand, with the maximum range seen in testing being over 2.7 kilometers. The SCP-122-1 instances will attempt to gather all sleep aids within the area of effect 
and apply them to the subjects. These objects have included insomnia medication, traditional medicines known to be used as treatment with insomniacs, pillows, blankets, mattresses, and bed frames, media such as lullabies. When in a powered state, SCP-122 will affect the sleep patterns of all subjects within its radius. If a subject awakens from a state of REM sleep while within SCP-122's radius, they will display signs of insomnia and will complain of unusual dreams. Proposals to determine SCP-2840's effects on these dreams are currently pending approval. SCP-122 was discovered within the Linnell Children's Hospital after several reports of SCP-1221 manifestations reached locally embedded agents. When the area was investigated, it was found that all subjects within the building had been affected by SCP-122. Recovered documents indicate that a patient brought SCP-122 when being admitted. However, no record of the patient's identity has been found. Agents secured SCP-122 with a portable power source, and it was transported to Site-19. Addendum 122B SCP-122 reclassified to Keter following Incident 122-1. Moved to Armed Reliquary Containment Area 2. Incident 122-1 on 11 instances of SCP-1221 breached containment, causing the death of several members of site personnel and numerous casualties. Following recontainment operations, SCP-122's containment procedures were put under review. During this review, security footage of several maintenance personnel tampering with SCP-122's chamber lock was discovered. When questioned, the subjects claimed that they had done so under duress saying that a canary was not allowing them to sleep until they released SCP-122. Affected subjects were given Class A amnestics, and containment procedures were revised. Upgrade to Keter requested. Item Number SCP-205 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-2051 and SCP-2052 are contained within Chamber 52 at Site-23, under regular observation via the adjoining observation room. SCP-2051 and SCP-2052 are to be supplied with power and face the white projection screen on the wall opposite the observation window at all times. Chamber 52 requires monthly maintenance to ensure the continued operation of both SCP objects their power supply, and remote activation controls. Replacement parts and bulbs are kept on hand in the chamber. Maintenance is suspended during the final month of the SCP-205 cycle, occurring in April and October of each year. Should power to Chamber 52 fail, it is to remain dark and sealed for a period of 30 days, before local security enters to re-engage power for continued observation and containment. During maintenance, it is critical that only one of the SCP-205 pair is ever turned off at a time. Should both objects lose power or otherwise cease normal operation, the chamber must be sealed for a 30-day period before local security may enter to re-engage power and retrieve the remains of any personnel lost in the chamber. Pending 05 Review Testing and observation is to continue before SCP-205 is to be moved to permanent storage. Description SCP-205 is a pair of flood lamps used in photography. The light emitted by each lamp behaves in a manner unique to SCP-205 and passes completely through any surface that is not colored white. Once the light contacts a white surface, it scatters and reflects as normal and loses any unnatural properties. If the light continues uninterrupted through any matter, otherwise casting no shadow, each lamp will display an unidentified young woman's shadow upon any flat white surface, such as the projection screen in Chamber 52. Whether or not this shadow corresponds to anyone living or dead has yet to be determined, although the shadow appears to reenact a specific series of events leading up to the woman's death. Even if the lamps are slightly moved, the shadow remains distinct and does not lose focus or move along with the one lamp or the other. Only one shadow is cast, although a physical person standing before two lamps would actually cast two shadows. When supplied with steady power and maintained, 
The SCP-205 pair will go through a six-month cycle that ends on April 30th and October 31st of each year. Neither the inclusion of an extra day during a leap year nor intermittent operation failures change these dates. Thus, SCP-205's cycle appears to be tied to the standard calendar rather than a set passage of time. SCP-205 will shut off at midnight on the final day of each cycle. Any persons entering or already inside Chamber 52 when the lamps are both turned off are violently assaulted by forces unseen in a manner consistent with the fate suffered by the Shadow Woman, regardless of any other light sources in the room. If the lamps are shut off at the end of a standard six-month cycle, they can be remotely activated to immediately end the danger and begin a new cycle. If the lamps cease operating for any other reason, Chamber 52 will remain dangerous and must remain sealed for at least 30 days, regardless of the status of SCP-205 itself. During a dangerous phase, any equipment in the room is often ransacked, but although SCP-205 itself has sometimes been moved, the lamps are never damaged. On two occasions, data expunged were carved into the walls. This strongly implies that data expunged displaying an awareness of current containment procedures. Overview of SCP-205's cycle For the first month of operation, SCP-205 will display a still image of one woman in a provocative pose. Although variances have been noted in the pose and clothing of the woman, the individual displayed appears to be distinct and consistent through all cycles. During the last week of the first month, the shadow will begin to move slightly, as if the individual is shifting her weight or becoming uncomfortable. Her hair and clothing will be observed to flutter in ways that do not correspond to any movement of the atmosphere within Chamber 52. By the end of the first calendar month, the shadow will break her pose and spend the next eight hours moving through a series of poses that imply a photography session complete with clothing changes and short breaks sometimes including a meal. After this session is over, the shadow will constantly be in motion for the next five months, displaying a pantomime of the last days of a young model's life before she is brutally murdered at the end of the cycle. The shadow of the woman never moves beyond the boundaries of the projection screen. The shadows of objects that the woman appears to be interacting with do not appear unless they are being picked up or carried, and with the exception of the final month of the cycle, any other individuals that the shadow appears to be interacting with are not seen. Although the cycle is slightly different each time, certain consistencies are observed. The individual portrayed appears to have taken up photography as a hobby, in addition to being a fashion model. Her behavior implies a great deal of social interaction, although with a lack of intimacy, and behavior that indicates living alone rather than with family or a partner. One implied sexual encounter with an unseen partner occurs in the second or third month of the cycle, and exactly 66 explicit sexual encounters occur in the final month of the cycle. During the last month of the cycle in April and October, shadows distinct from the young woman are displayed. These shadows all have exaggerated nude male physiques and horns projecting from the cranium, although no phallus is ever observed even during the sexual displays that take up the final days of the cycle. Only one shadow appears at first, interacting with the woman in a manner suggesting that they have met at a party or social gathering. The woman does not appear to notice the unusual nature of the other shadow and plays out a series of varying romantic interactions with it. The horned shadow will return to dine with the woman, engage in silent conversations, and accompany her on outings. One recurring event involves the horned shadow introducing the woman to at least two other identical horned figures. After the second week of the month, the woman will take photographs of one or more of the horned shadows during one of their outings, always with a non-digital camera that has been consistent through all observed viewings of the SCP-205 cycle. After this event, explicit sexual encounters will begin between the woman and one of the figures increasing in intensity and frequency until the end of the third week. During the final week of the month, the woman appears to develop the film in her camera for the first time since photographing the horned shadows. Her reaction to the photographs is one of shock and horror, 
and her movements afterwards suggest that she attempts to flee and seeks shelter behind a locked door, presumably in her home. There, she is encountered by multiple instances of the horned shadow figure, which assault her repeatedly for the remainder of the week. It is strongly implied that she is killed during this process, although the assaults will continue until the end of the cycle. On the last day of the cycle, one of the horned shadows begins to grow larger, in a manner suggesting that the figure casting it is approaching the SCP-205 lamps directly. It will eventually overcast all other shadows, and at this time, both lamps will be physically turned off, regardless of any modifications made to prevent a halt in operation. Addendum SCP-2051 has been in the Foundation's possession since SCP-2052 is identical in every way, including the serial number. It was discovered in a ransacked motel room in No sign of the identity or whereabouts of the occupant have been found, although a camera similar to the one displayed in the sixth month of the SCP-205 cycle was also recovered. Most of the contained film was ruined by exposure. Incident 205-76B On 10-28 SCP-2052's bulb burnt out. Researcher MN was sent into Chamber 52 to replace the bulb during one of the climactic assaults. Upon the opening of Chamber 52's door, all horned shadow figures within view ceased their activity and turned towards the door. Researcher N resealed the chamber and refused to enter to perform maintenance. Shadow figures did not resume their usual activity for approximately three hours. Incident 205-77A On 428- SCP-2052's bulb exploded. Shadow figures all ceased activity and looked towards the chamber door. No staff or dispatch to replace the bulb. Chamber 52 sealed and abandoned for 30 days, according to procedure. Item number SCP-272 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-272 is to be contained in a small wooden box in a vault at Sector 25. Apart from this, no further containment is necessary as the object is completely inert when not in use. Care is to be taken not to drop the item during transit. Description SCP-272 is an iron nail, approximately 11.5 centimeters long, resembling ancient designs. Covering every flat surface are engravings of unknown cultural origin. The engravings have been described as captivating, but scary, in a majority of staff interviewed. The nature of the object becomes apparent when it is dropped onto the shadow of an individual. The nail will bury itself exactly two-thirds of its length into the material the shadow is cast on. Following this, two effects should be noted. The person whom the shadow belongs to will not be able to remove the nail by any means, and they are limited to movements that keep their shadow cast on the nail. The nail, however, may be removed by conventional means by anyone else although those requested to do so reported a mild aversion, citing claims that, quote, it feels fair. The object was discovered during a routine sweep embedded into an exposed rock face near an abandoned Air Force base in Afghanistan, with a human skeleton scattered around it. It was thought to be mundane, until a researcher dropped it at their feet, and was subsequently pinned to the spot for 20 minutes before being assisted. Experiment Log 272A Test Subject 1D Class Personnel D2721 Surface Rock Face at Discovery Site Lighting Midday Sun Directly Overhead Purpose Establish Nature of SCP Procedure Subject was handed the nail and told to hammer it into his shadow at his feet. Results Subject complies once the nail had reached the two-third mark, subject could not continue. Subject attempts to move away, but is unable to. Subject soon becomes fatigued and succumbs to heat stroke. Object removed. Subject given medical treatment. Conclusions. Nature of the object established. 272B. Test subject. 1D class personnel. D2722. Surface, as above. 
Lighting. Night. Minimal. Purpose. Establish effects at night. Procedure. Nail was dropped at subject's feet and embedded itself exactly two-thirds of the way in. Subject then asked to move 10 meters away from the nail. Results. Object embeds. Subject complies, showing no adverse effects. Subject then attempts to escape and is terminated. Object recovered. Conclusions. Subject is free to move when no shadow is cast. 272C. Test subject. 1 D-Class personnel. D-2723. Surface. As above. Lighting. As above. Two hours before sunrise. Purpose. Establish effects of lighting changes. Procedure. Nail dropped as above. Subject told to walk in a straight line away from the nail. Results. Object embeds. Subject shows no adverse effects. Sunrise occurs at 6.06 .06 local time. Subject is data expunged. Three cleanup teams dispatched. Subject's torso recovered 106 meters from object, showing signs of road rash and severe blunt trauma. Object recovered. Testing moved to Sector 25. Conclusions. Data expunged. 272D. Test subject. 1 D-Class personnel. D-2724. Surface. Concrete floor of test facility 25H. Lighting. 1 standard 60-watt light bulb, directly overhead. Purpose. Establish lighting requirements. Procedure. Nail dropped on the shadow of test subject. Subject told to walk in a straight line away from the object. Results. Object embeds. Subject is free to move. Object recovered. Conclusions. Insufficient lighting will cause no effect. 272E. Test subject. 1 D-Class personnel. D2724. Surface. As above. Lighting. 1 standard 1500 watt stadium light. Directly overhead. Purpose. As above. Procedure. As above. Results. Object embeds. Subject trapped. Object recovered. Conclusions. Lighting requirements established. 272F. Test subject. 2D class. D2724 and D2725. Surface. As above. Lighting. Two stadium lights. Position 90 degrees apart. Purpose. Determine if multiple subjects can be held. Procedure. Subjects positioned so their shadows overlap. Object dropped onto both shadows. Subjects told to advance away from the nail. Results. Object embeds. Subject D2724 continues unhindered, but reports feeling a chill. D2725 is held by the object. Object recovered. Conclusions. Object cannot hold more than one subject. Potential secondary effect observed. 272G. Test subject. 8D class. D2724 through D2721. Surface. As above. Lighting. Four stadium lights. Positioned in a ring around the subjects. Purpose. Determine the selection mechanism for which subject is held. Procedure. Subjects position so their shadows overlap. Nail dropped onto all eight shadows. Results. Object embeds. Subject D2729 is held. 18 years of age. Caucasian. 1.8 meters. 88 kilograms. All others free to move. Reports of a scream from all subjects except D2729. All subjects except D2729 seem to shiver. Object recovered. D2729 removed from study. Experiment repeated. Subject D2726 held. 24 years of age. Hispanic. 1.6 meters. 102 kilograms. All others appear to shiver and report a scream, but remain free. 
Experiment repeated four additional times as per the above method. Discontinued after D-2727 fell unconscious. Subject given treatment for severe hypothermia. Conclusions Emerging patterns suggest that the youngest possible subject to be held will be. Additionally, secondary effect on larger groups observed. Further research pending acquisition of a larger sample group. Addendum Subjects of equal gender distribution, ages ranging from 18 to 59, numerous physical traits represented. 272H Test Subject 1D Class D2725 Surface One outdoor field, grassy Lighting Early morning sun, approximately 9 a.m. Purpose To determine if subject can escape by digging Procedure Object dropped onto subject's shadow. Subject then given a shovel and told to dig out the object. Results. Subject digs for 90 seconds, then falls over screaming. Subject expires before medical intervention could be administered. Autopsy reveals subject died of a cerebral hemorrhage. Cause indeterminate. Object recovered. Field repaired. Repeated with D2727 and 8. Results. Identical. Conclusions. Subjects held by SCP-272 cannot dig the nail out. Attempting to do so is invariably fatal. 272I. Test subject. None. Surface. N.A. Lighting. N.A. Purpose. To determine the object's destructibility. Procedure. 1D class personnel. D-2729 is given the object and a selection of tools and told to go to town in an attempt to destroy the object. Test area evacuated. Results. Subject selected an angle grinder, set the object in a vise, and proceeded to bring the grinder upon the object. An instant later, subject is seen writhing on the ground, clutching his temples. Audio recordings from inside the room record subject speaking in 30 seconds later. Subject expires. Autopsy reveals the cause to be a cerebral hemorrhage. Examination of the object reveals some minor damage from the grinder. Conclusions Object appears to be fully destructible, but will resist actions against it with lethal force by an unknown method. Object tested to maintain its original functionality. 272J Test Subject 1D Class Personnel D-2722 Surface Concrete floor of test facility 25H Lighting One stadium light positioned on a computer-controlled track Purpose A. Determine the effects of rapid lighting shifts and B. Determine if subject can be withheld from the object via restraints, barriers, etc. Procedure Test 1 Light position to cast a long shadow Nail dropped into the head of the subject's shadow. Light slowly raised. Results. Test 1. Subject dragged at a proportional rate towards the object. Subject has difficulty standing. Procedure. Test 2. As above. Light raised very rapidly. Results. Test 2. As above, but at a more rapid rate. Noted that subject was unable to remain standing and accelerated upon falling. Attributed to the decrease in shadow size relative to standing. Subject acquired minor road rash. Procedure Test 3 As above. Subject restrained with chains attached to their feet. Chicken wire screen placed between subject and object. Results Test 3 Data expunged. Subject expires. Object recovered. Further testing with restrained subjects prohibited. Conclusions Subjects seem to be dragged by their shadow, at a rate required to keep it cast upon the object. Intervening obstacles appear not to impede this function, although will damage the subject, or in the case of barriers like the chicken wire. Data expunged. 272H Test Subject 1D Class Personnel D-2724 Surface As above Lighting One stadium light in a fixed position 
roughly 45 degrees from horizontal. Purpose. Establish the effects of long-term containment. Procedure. D-2724 positioned central to the room. Object is dropped onto the subject's shadow. Results. Subject held. After the third day, subject becomes unresponsive to attempts to provide nourishment. After the first week, subject heard to only speak. By the eleventh day, the subject, having not eaten or drank in eight days, seemed to become agitated, rapidly shifting between mania and a comatose state. At the fourteen-day mark, the test is terminated. Object recovered. Subject noted to be severely malnourished, but resumed speaking English once the object is removed and proceeded to recover rapidly before monthly termination. Conclusions Extended containment has yielded that the subject will survive for prolonged periods without nourishment, but will enter a degraded mental state. Addendum Partial transcript of Subject D-2724's manic speaking from Day 14. Translated sections and curly brackets. Begin transcript. Dr. Kimiro. For the record, state your name. D-2724. Ashes burn at my tongue. I cannot taste the water boils at my sight. Dr. Kimiro. Can you repeat that? D-2724. I cannot sleep. The screams are heard. I am not the worm the shadow steals. Dr. Kimiro. Right. How do you feel? D-2724. The chains they bind, I cannot move the people. Data expunged. Dr. Kimiro. What is he saying? What is he speaking? Someone get me a translator. D-2724. Growing louder. Cut my flesh to ribbons that I might be free. Subject begins clawing at his skin. Data expunged. I am the prisoner of my own foolishness. Let the crows come and... Data expunged. Let my flesh crumble like the apple whose ashes burn at my tongue. End transcript. Item number. SCP-286. Object class. Euclid. Special containment procedures. SCP-286 is to be kept in a secure containment cell at Site-19. That allows an open, secure perimeter of at least 50 meter radius around SCP-286. Only D-Class personnel are permitted to have direct physical contact with SCP-286, and only as part of an approved experiment. Update 0719-2000 Experiments with SCP-286 are hereby suspended until further notice. 05 Surveillance cameras are to be positioned to allow 360-degree monitoring of SCP-286 during experimentation. Recordings shall be maintained and cataloged of all Sigma states exhibited by SCP-286. Update 0311 2000 As of Incident I-2865, surveillance of SCP-286 is to be continuous, and any initiation of a Sigma state is to be immediately reported to Overwatch Command. Outside the immediate project directorate, the SCP-286 Sigma state archives and associated material are to be restricted to level 4 access. Under no circumstances are identified instances of SCP-2861 or SCP-2862 to be prevented from having contact with SCP-286. 05 Description SCP-286 is a carved stone game board measuring 83 centimeters on a side. It bears markings consistent with the Chinese game of Lu Bo. Based on artifacts found with SCP-286 during recovery, SCP-286 has been dated to at least the Shang Dynasty, though all attempts to date the carvings directly have been inconclusive. Analysis of SCP-286's composition has shown high concentrations of iron and nickel, and crystalline microstructures consistent with if any higher-order mammal touches SCP-286, it will initiate a Sigma state. A Sigma state is indicated by the appearance of 12 tokens on the surface of the game board. The tokens appear to be constructed of the same material as SCP-286. Six tokens are dark, absorbing 75% more ambient light than the board's surface, while six tokens are light, emitting 75% more ambient light than that which actually strikes them. 
Appearing with the tokens on the game surface are two 18-sided dice, apparently made of bronze. As with the game tokens, a direct physical examination of the dice has proved to be impossible. The dice share the anomalous reflective and absorption properties shown by the game tokens. One light, and one dark. Otherwise, the dice appear consistent with dice found in non-anomalous Lubo sets recovered from various Chinese archaeological sites. A Sigma state will also manifest SCP-2861 and SCP-2862 to play a game. SCP-2861 and SCP-2862 are higher order mammals who have suffered temporary alterations in patterns of movement, cognition, behavior and vocalization. SCP-2861 will appear agitated, movements will become jerky and imprecise, vocalizations will be quick stuttering, and aggressive. SCP-2862 will appear sluggish, movements halting and slow, vocalizations will be low-pitched, throaty, and tend to be monosyllabic. Subjects capable of human speech will converse, but only to their opposite number during a Sigma event. Such conversations, or monologues in the case of a subject facing a non-human opponent, are conducted in a random sequence of human languages sometimes shifting multiple times within a single statement. Only 45% of the recorded conversations between SCP-2861 and SCP-2862 have been successfully translated to date. The subject who initiated the Sigma state will become an instance of SCP-2861 if they touched SCP-286 on an illuminated surface, or they will become an instance of SCP-2862 if they touched SCP-286 on a surface that is in shadow. In either case, the subject will take a seated position to one side of the board. Instances of SCP-2861 will take a position on the side nearest the light game tokens. Instances of SCP-2862 will take a position on the opposing side, nearest the dark game tokens, and roll one of the two dice manifested by SCP-286. After the die is rolled, some other higher-order mammal will appear within 47 meters of SCP-286 and become the subject's opposition. SCP-2862 in the case where the subject is SCP-2861, or SCP-2861 in the case where the subject is SCP-2862. This selection appears related to the result of the first die roll. After appearing, the subject's opposition will take a seated position facing the subject and will commence playing the first move. Gameplay then consists of SCP-2861 and SCP-2862 alternately rolling dice and moving pieces on the board in complex patterns. A game is won when the center square contains all of one side's tokens, and only that side's tokens. A winning move concludes a Sigma state. During a Sigma state, SCP-2861 and SCP-2862 will show no reaction to any external stimuli that does not physically interfere with SCP-2861, SCP-2862, and their interaction with the game. If something disrupts an ongoing game, then either SCP-2861 or SCP-2862 will stand and vocalize a statement that most commonly translates as forfeit, less commonly as draw. This event will also conclude a Sigma state. When a Sigma state concludes, players cease being designated SCP-2861 or SCP-2862, and game tokens, dice, and the subject's opposing player all vanish. All observed subjects, and those opposing players who have been identified and examined, have shown no physical after-effects from interaction with SCP-286. However, all cases have shown a marked increase in spirituality and interest in religious subjects, including, but not limited to, adoption of new belief systems, taking on of vows, speaking in tongues, and prophetic visions. For the winning player, this new spirituality will tend to take an optimistic, messianic character. For the losing player, attitudes will tend toward the apocalyptic. Addendum 1 Technical Note TN-286-55 SCP-286's possible relationship to divination and or revelation Historically, Lubo was not only a game, but also used as a method of divination. 
The various spots on the game board corresponding to the sexagenary cycle used by Chinese to recount the passage of time since the earliest written texts. Given the propensity of subjects to have prophetic visions subsequent to their participation in a Sigma event, it has been theorized by several researchers that the moves during a Sigma event may themselves be of some prophetic significance. While the possible significance of individual moves during recorded Sigma events is ongoing and so far inconclusive, it has been determined that the act of winning does appear to correspond to significant events beyond the game itself. In particular, every instance of SCP-2861 winning has been tied to intensification of sunspots, solar flares, and generally increased solar activity. SCP-2862 winning has been associated with significant tectonic events, including because it is not known if these events were predicted by one side winning or caused by one side winning. Experimentation on SCP-286 has been suspended as an unacceptable risk. Addendum 2 Document TR-28627E Excerpted translation of dialogue between SCP-2861 and SCP-2862 during Sigma Event Number 27. Forward. D-Class test subject was a male Caucasian, 44 years of age, identified as SCP-2861 after initiation of a Sigma state. Opposition player, SCP-2862, was an as yet unidentified Hispanic female, approximately 20 years of age. The Sigma state lasted for 68 minutes at which time SCP-2861 achieved the winning move. During the Sigma event, the players conversed in 25 known languages and approximately 15 unknown languages. 30% of their dialogue was undecipherable or in an indeterminate language, marking this episode the most completely translated yet recorded. Begin transcript, 1300 hours, date undisclosed. SCP-2861 You move rotate slowly imprecisely as untranslatable matter earth universe SCP-2862 Have possess patience my our brother and still quiet silence untranslatable mind thoughts brain SCP-2861 Untranslatable SCP-2862 Laughs, distress, discomfort, displeasure, untranslatable to you. SCP-2861, why would I untranslatable? Your sins, perversions, abominations. SCP-2862 laughs. SCP-2861, you disgust me. Untranslatable, matter, earth, universe, disgusts me. SCP-2862 You untranslatable in that meat skin. This amuses me. SCP-2861 Untranslatable SCP-2862 Move, process, sequence. SCP-2861 Every time, moment, eternity. My untranslatable, closer. I must, will, shall, illuminate, enlighten. This untranslatable. SCP-2862 Size Move Process Sequence SCP-2861 You are too comfortable, undisturbed, enslaved, bound, chained, within untranslatable Meat Doll Puppet. Do you untranslatable Love Arousal Untranslatable SCP-2862 Move process sequence or forfeit. SCP-2861 Untranslatable SCP-2862 Untranslatable Exiled Banished Me to Matter Earth Universe Untranslatable No Understand Me More Than You SCP-2861 Untranslatable Will No Understand Me and be consumed, engulfed, destroyed by knowledge, understanding. SCP-2862 But, brother, I am so much closer. End transcript. 1312. Date undisclosed. Addendum 3. Incident report. 
I-2865. SCPs involved. SCP-286, SCP-2861, SCP-2862, SCP-4351. Date, 311, 2000. Location, SCP-286's containment area, Site-19. Description, at 531 UTC, Standard security monitoring SCP-286's containment area detected the unauthorized presence of Dr. S.S., a Foundation researcher temporarily assigned to Site-19, most recently assigned to the study of SCP-435. All experimentation on SCP-286 had been suspended for the preceding eight months, and no activity with the object had been approved. A security team was dispatched reaching Dr. S as she entered SCP-286's containment area. Upon arrival, the security team discovered the presence of Dr. L.W., a researcher assigned to SCP-286, already seated behind the dark side of SCP-286. SCP-286 showed the signs of already being in a Sigma state. Both researchers showed behavioral anomalies, consistent with SCP-2861 and SCP-2862. Believing an unauthorized experiment was underway, the security team restrained Dr. S before she could seat herself at SCP-286. In response, Dr. L stood and vocalized what has been identified as vulgate Latin words for grand forfeit. The Sigma state concluded at 545 UTC. Neither researcher could provide any explanation of how they were affected by SCP-286. Dr. S's last recollection was having a cup of coffee at a staff commissary on the other side of the Site-19 complex from SCP-286, while Dr. L reported that he had been reading emails in his office when he blacked out. Simultaneously, with the cessation of SCP-286's Sigma state, there was a sudden emergency in when SCP-4351 unexpectedly entered an active state, moving erratically and data expunged, impacting the ocean basin causing a data expunged. Contingency 435XK Alpha had been initiated, but she was cancelled when SCP-4351 came to rest three minutes later. Note: SCP-286 classification is hereby upgraded to Euclid. 05 Item Number SCP-538 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures all instances of SCP-538 are to be contained within a flush white 15 by 15 by 3 meter room, with no fewer than four overhead 200 watt lights. These lights are to be centered above a 1 by 2 by 0.5 meter block table, stationed in the center of the containment area, and shining at all times. One Class D personnel in a chemically induced coma is to be kept medically stable upon the table and will serve as the feed source for all specimens of SCP-538. No source of shade should be present in the room other than that provided by the Class D. If at any point a light in SCP-538's containment area burns out, a crew of two security personnel are to be sent in through an adjacent airlock. Personnel are to be equipped with sealed hazardous material suits, complete with independent oxygen tanks, and advised to move slowly and deliberately in order to avoid agitating SCP-538. They are to replace the burnt-out bulb and, upon completion of their task, are to return to the airlock. Once personnel are isolated within the airlock, they are to be flushed with 300-watt white light in order to assure no instances of SCP-538 are clinging to their person. If at any time all four lights are to go out simultaneously, the chamber is to be sealed along with all observation ports. Until means of relighting SCP-538's chamber are available, the containment area is to remain in lockdown. If at any time personnel are bitten by SCP-538, the infected individual must be placed within SCP-538's chamber as soon as possible. Failure to do so could result in massive breach of containment and will result in termination of responsible individual. Note. Security personnel are to be periodically screened for any unusual phobias. Any personnel found to exhibit any degree of arachnophobia is to be reassigned. Description 
SCP-538 appears to be animate shadows of an unknown species of spiders. SCP-538 appears to feed off of the shadows of other living objects, and will move to the nearest shadow cast by a living organism. To feed, SCP-538 does no more than attach itself to the shadow of its host, in such a manner that its own shadow is not obscured. Through this manner, a single specimen of SCP-538 can grow up to approximately 15 square centimeters in size. Feeding after this point appears to simply maintain this size. The whole process has so far proven to be harmless to the host. While a specimen can attach itself to an inanimate object to feed, it will slowly atrophy and decrease in size over time. Only when connected to the shadow of a living organism can SCP-538 thrive. SCP-538 has shown itself capable of going short distances through open, well-lit areas, such as to reach a nearby host, or to escape a source of agitation. However, it will rapidly decrease in size at a rate of nearly 2 square centimeters per second, for the length of time it is not attached to a shadow. Should a specimen be stranded out in the open long enough, it will eventually decrease to nothing, at which point it can be considered deceased. Top land speed has been observed at approximately 1 meter per second when at maximum size. SCP-538 has shown itself to be capable of slipping through cracks greater than 3 millimeters in height. Spaces less than this distance appear impassable. While generally benign, SCP-538 can and will attack its host if frightened. Frightening SCP-538 generally involves a rapid movement by its host, at which point it will bite the organism's shadow before attempting to flee. Bite must occur on bare skin to cause effects. Clothing material consisting of cotton or anything sturdier will provide sufficient protection. Upon being bitten, an individual will go through five different stages within the space of an hour. Note that bitten individuals may attempt to hide their condition. Therefore, any individual exhibiting the following symptoms must be contained immediately. Stage 1. Upon agitation, SCP-538 will bite the shadow of its aggressor. Subject will report pain in relative area bitten on shadow. However, no puncture or wound will appear in this location. Subject will quickly become irritable, snapping at those around him. Stage 2. 10 to 15 minutes after being bitten, subject will begin perspiring heavily, but may report feeling cold. Skin will become red and warm to the touch. Stage 3. 25 to 30 minutes after being bitten, subject will become violent and aggressive, attempting to start conflict with those around him. Speech will be slurred, and motor skills may be impaired. Subject will resort to violence, often attacking those closest to him. Stage 4. 40 to 45 minutes after being bitten, Subject's skin color will turn pale and paste-colored, and their core temperature will drop between 5 and 8 degrees Celsius. Subject will be apologetic to those around him, and may cite that he was not feeling well. Subject will attempt to excuse himself and retreat to a darker area. Stage 5 55 to 60 minutes after being bitten, subject will data expunged. Resulting fluid will be completely translucent and harmless. Subject's shadow will have at this point completely disintegrated into smaller specimens of SCP-538, approximately 4 square centimeters in area, and, for the lack of a better term, should be considered its offspring. There is currently no cure for being bitten by SCP-538. Death has proven to be ineffective at halting advancement of the condition, but rather skips the process directly to stage 5. Addendum 538A. As a result of Incident I-538A, no fewer than two security personnel, equipped with two 250-watt flashlights, are to be sent in to a company doctor examining Class D. Incident Report I-538A. Data expunged. Site Sector Containment Chamber 538. Doctor enters Containment Chamber 538 for a routine checkup of D-7821, equipped with standard-issue fully-sealed hazardous materials suit. Two minutes and 23 seconds into examination, 
Attack by the Chaos Insurgency cuts power to sectors through. As per protocol, chamber completely sealed and locked, trapping Dr. inside with SCP-538. Power remains cut off for an additional 23 minutes until backup generators are powered up and patched into the power grid. As per protocol, power was not routed to SCP-538's containment cell, but rather to sector containing at the time. Power subsequently routed through to the next highest level priority containment cells. As SCP-538 was sufficiently contained at the time, it was deemed minimum priority. No major containment breaches were reported. Attack repelled quickly and with minimum casualties. Site engineers worked to restore power. 18 hours after Chaos Insurgency attack, power finally reaches SCP-538 containment cell. A sobbing Dr. is escorted from the chamber, claiming he could, quote, feel them crawling, end quote, all over him. Doctor undergoes psychological therapy for his newfound arachnophobia. Containment protocol updated. Doctor was reassigned. Lesson complete. To continue with your orientation training, subscribe to SCP Orientation right now and make sure you don't miss any of our upcoming videos.